Okay, so Dare is not an erotica novel, but just like in life, erotic things do happen. So <laughs> it's actually a chiclet retelling of Faust set in the hip hop world. <laughs> and this scene is um, the main character, Maya. Um, there are many ways to describe the plot of the story, but basically, you know, she's a good girl who kind of has to go bad to figure some things in her life out. So she's finally got a man, but he will not have sex with her because he, you know, values her and things like that. <laughs> so her mission is to bed this gentleman. So here we go. And right now, okay, so they're on the private jet. The jet's romantic bedroom had wine-colored brocade walls. Maya had stopped by Turning Head Salon before they left for a bikini wax to make things more enticing for her man. Three zips of hot wax, four blood-curdling screams, a new birth control prescription, and she was ready for natural love. <laughs> Miles high in the sky, Maya lay on the circular bed, swaddled in the burgundy velvet covers that matched her lace baby doll and sexy boy shorts. If this wasn't a hint, she didn't know what was. Maya reached over to the side table and took a swig, directly from the bottle of Klug, Krug Close du Mesnil champagne, right before Thug came out of the bathroom and got in bed. He was wearing old gym shorts and a scruffy tee. <laughs> but he was still flawless. A man couldn't be more enticing. Damn, Thug nuzzled his, ne his face in Maya's neck. Somebody smells good. Ylang ylang, <laughs> she said, arching her back to make her neck and other areas easier to access. All this for me? His gravelly voice sounded deeper. Maya nodded. I think you're trying to seduce me, girl, he said, running a hand down her legs and between her already parted thighs. Maya giggled suggestively, waiting to follow his lead. Damn, I love you, Thug said as he kissed her face. Maya stroked his hair. Mmm, rugged. She never thought that she could love anyone else like she'd love Rob. And she still wasn't completely sure. You know, she was trying to love Robeson like she'd never been hurt. Difficult, but he had to be carrying baggage too, isn't that life? Being that she definitely was no longer in love with Rob, the space in her heart was now open. Robeson nibbled on Meyer's lower lip, softly but forcefully. She would have thought that this would have been grating or annoying, but it was incredibly erotic. It told her what kind of lover he was, what kind of lover he would be. Full, raw, and unedited, he said. That's how I love you. Yeah, she said, incredibly turned on. Maya rolled over and sat on top of him. She decided to go for it. Her friends always said that speaking dirty to men seemed to drive them crazy. <clears throat> uh, so, I got something for you, <laughs> she said. <laughs> Robeson held Maya's neat waist and centered her on his manhood. Yeah, what you got for me, Cleopatra? He slid his hands down, good, and started molding her butt, better. <laughs> Maya was feeling her champagne courage. She started moving her hips around on top of his body. Yeah, baby, he said, so she moved faster, feeling his enjoyment. She steadied her, she steadied her mind. Okay, dirty talk time. She cleared her throat <laughs> quietly. So, um, you like that fat ass, Robeson? <laughs> what? I, I said, you, you like that big, fat, juicy ass? She bounced up and down. Um, everything is nice and, and tight. Nice and tight and ready for you. Big, fat, juicy ass. He moved his arms from her butt and back up to her waist. Um, why are you talking like that? Uh-oh, she felt him softening. I, I just thought... He sat up. You just thought what? That you'd act like a whore? Well, I figured it was okay if I was your whore. <laughs> Maya searched his face for meaning. Was he angry? He put his arms around Maya and regained his composure. It's okay, but come on, baby. I don't want to dirty you up like that. You're a goddess, a queen. I just want to kneel at your shrine. Maya nodded. Was it too much to want him to enter the shrine for worship? <laughs> Robeson leaned in and kissed Maya straight through to her soul. Their tongues encircled each other and locked. His lips felt so good. 
Even our kisses are poetry, he said, caressing her breasts through the lace. He was driving her to the brink of insanity. Y'all sisters say y'all want to be respected. Man, try to respect your ass and you get shot down, he laughed. She grabbed his hair in two handfuls. Ow, he said, and they laughed together. They pulled the covers up over their heads and talked like kids do until they fell asleep. They were awakened by the pilot announcing that they were flying over Virginia. Okay, so now a little bit later, she decides to try again. Maya decided that tonight she was going to finally get her man. Mind, soul, and body. Enough was enough. Was it wrong to want a little kinesthetic healing? She understood that he was abstaining out of respect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But with all due respect, she was overdue. Her self-control was nil. And although she had been, and, and she had been looking at the crew boys more and more, although they never would have been her flow before. Not to mention one jerk of an ex who shall remain nameless. The rest of the flight was all about Maya, Robeson, and the art of seduction. Since her thug liked to lead, she would let him do so, laying, tra laying traps of a woman's good graces to snare her man. She would present her entire being as an invitation. Being a sociologist, she knew that Doug was a contrarian who liked the challenge. So a closed door approach was the way to go. Contrarians want what they cannot have, going contrary to what is expected. Again, she realized that it was unethical to use her field's knowledge for personal purposes, but what you gonna do? <laughs> Doug had fallen back asleep, perfect. Maya sent the team a message to leave them on board even after the jet landed and took a hot bath, cleansing every orifice and oiling her pulse points. L'Occitane rose and rain, Lucy promised, would make any man's knees buckle. Athena's lifetime of notes had only gotten her so far. And although technically she hadn't seen Lucy with anyone, Lucy's tales of international exploits and intrigue were the stuff dreams are made on. Maya tightened up her bikini wax with Doug's cordless razor and buffed the instrument clean. What? He'd never know. She smelled like passion. She pulled her hair back in a loose ponytail that could dismantle at the most opportune moment. She was excited knowing what was in store, seducing herself as much as she planned to seduce, to induce lovemaking from her man. She put Vaseline on her lips and powder over the dark circles under her eyes. She wanted it to be a long night, so she hid three condoms, three, between the pillows. She slipped on a red see-through backless and almost frontless La Perla Teddy. She wasn't quite sure what distinguished a bodysuit from a teddy, but this was most definitely a teddy. Maya replaced the room's light bulb with a red one. The better to see you with, my dear. She wrote seven words on slips of notebook paper and trailed them around the bed. Tactical procedure, know your target. Words are the bait to capture a poet, just as diamonds are the bait to catch a thief. Her gingerbread trail of words would lure him into her chamber. Maya caught a glimpse of herself in the mirror and leaned so close that she almost fell into her own image and drowned. She was on fire. It was time for the original man and woman to indulge in a little original sin. No excuses. She shook him. Hey, babe, um, somebody left you a note. What? Doug looked at the floor, back at Maya, who was wearing her most angelic expression as she walked back into the bathroom. What you up to, Cleopatra? Doug made his way around the bed, reading the words out loud. The heaven you give is a pyramid? He got it. Doug is a pyramid, huh? Solid, ingenious, and everlasting, Maya called out. What happened to the light? Maya re-entered and sashayed across the room as if she were looking for something that wasn't quite there. Oh, the bulb blew, and this was all I could find, a red bulb. It's relaxing, right? <laughs> She wove her hips like a serpent winding between the tree of its choice. The apple she offered was herself. Just the sound of his voice drove her crazy. Her body had never had this kind of physical reaction to any man. Doug seemed to lose his words, so he repeated hers. Solid and genius and everlasting. Uh-huh. <laughs>